Dismay. Widespread dismay. That's what greeted the tribunal's decision last night to overturn the suspension of Willy Rioli. Across clubland, and that stretched from presidents, chief executives, footy managers, coaches and players who have been lectured about the need to take head contact seriously, only to see a verdict that contradicted everything that they thought they knew. I can't recall being more shocked or more wrong about the decision a jury would reach. So much work has been done to change attitudes and in the long term change behaviour when it comes to careless conduct that leaves an opposing player vulnerable to high contact. The AFL could not have been more explicit in the off-season. If you are second to the contest to the contest and make high contact, you're gone. Most people in footy had reached the point of instantly recognising Rioli's action as a prime example of what is no longer reasonable. But meaningful change requires vigilance, and last night's not guilty verdict undermines years of reform. How in round one could the tribunal be so far apart from the AFL and its match review officer when it comes to applying the rules? In prospect, the more contentious case was Mitch Robinson. In many eyes, the Lion is unlucky to have a one-week suspension upheld. But it does serve the overall reform and the primary consideration of protecting the player with his head over the ball. So for all the could-haves and should-haves and would-haves, the one thing Robinson can't do in that scenario is make forceful high contact with Xavier Dersma. Robinson's very upset. I think a lot of people will sympathise with that, but the principle is there and the principle is sound. What the Rioli case tells us is anyone's guess. West Coast started with an argument that Rioli didn't make high contact with Rao's head. They used a photograph to depict daylight between Rioli's hip and the head of his opponent, and that was because Rao's head had snapped back from the previous frame when contact was made. I didn't give much for their case at that stage. But in the West, they were adamant, adamant that Rioli had to be cleared. And it seems that this was the winning argument mounted by David Grace to quote, there's a real issue to whether the tribunal wants to send a message to the football community that if you go for a mark at an odd angle and perhaps misjudge the timing, then you pay the consequences. Taking high marking or attempted high marking out of the equation of a game of football is what the tribunal needs to consider. That is something the tribunal should give very careful consideration to before finding his actions infringe the laws of Australian football. So the Eagles put the high mark itself on trial and cited Nick Revolt's iconic mark with the flight to justify Rioli's actions, and they were successful. I would respectfully say that if you call up those two moments on YouTube while we're chatting this morning, they share very little in common. And the fact Rioli didn't contest the mark is the most critical factor. I think headquarters would be rattled to find itself so at odds with the tribunal right out of the gates. If it deems last night's verdict changes the application and intention of its rules, then it is duty bound to appeal But if the AFL feels like it can let confusion reign, then they'll let it be. It's not a very promising start for the league's judicial system at the outset of a fresh season. I can't recall being more shocked or more wrong about the decision a jury would reach.